When you move beyond simple shapes and paths, two useful features of SwiftUI come together to create some beautiful effects with remarkably little work. The first is CG Affine Transform, which describes how a path or view should be rotated, scaled, or sheared. And the second is Even Odd Fills, which allow us to control how overlapping shapes should be rendered. To demonstrate both of these, we're going to create a flower shape out of some rotated ellipse petals, with each ellipse positioned around a circle. The mathematics behind this is relatively straightforward, with one catch. CG Affine Transform measures angles in radians rather than degrees. If it's been a while since you were at school, the least you need to know is this. 3.141 radians is equal to 180 degrees. So 3.141 radians multiplied by 2 is equal to 360 degrees. And the 3.141 isn't a coincidence. The actual value is the mathematical constant pi. So what we're going to do is as follows. First, create a new empty path. Second, count from 0 up to pi multiplied by 2, i.e. 360 degrees in radians, counting in 1 8th of pi each time, which will give us 16 petals in total. Third, create a rotation transform equal to the current number. Fourth, add to that rotation a movement equal to half the width and height of our draw space, so each petal centered in our shape. Fifth, create a new path for a petal equal to an ellipse of a specific size. Sixth, apply our transform to that ellipse so it's moved into position. And seventh, add that petal's path to our main path. This will make more sense once you see the code running. But first I want to add three more small things. First, rotating something, then moving it, does not produce the same result as moving then rotating. Because when you rotate it first, the direction it moves will be different from if it were not rotated. Second, to really help you understand what's going on, we'll be making our petal ellipses use a couple of properties we can pass in externally. Third, ranges such as 1 through 5 are great if you want to count through numbers one at a time. But if you want to count in twos, or in our case count in one eighths of pi, you should use stride from to by instead. All right, enough talk. Add the shape to your project now. Struct flower conforms to shape. So first, how much should we move this petal away from the center? We'll say var petal offset double equals minus 20. Next, how wide should each petal be? Var petal width double equals 100. Then, func path in rect, cg rect, returns path. First, we'll make a path that holds all petals. We'll say var path equals a new path. Then we'll count from 0 up to pi times 2, moving up pi over 8 each time. For number in stride from 0 to cgfloat.pi times 2 by cgfloat.pi divided by 8. We'll then rotate the petal by the current value of our loop, let rotation equals CG affine transform, rotation angle, number. Then move the petal so it's at the center of our view. Let position equals rotation, dot concatenating, CG affine transform, translation x, rec dot width divided by 2, y, rec dot height divided by 2. Next, we'll make a path for this petal using our properties plus a fixed y and height. Let original petal equals path ellipse in cg rect x cg float petal offset y0 width cg float petal width height rect dot width divided by 2. Then we'll apply our transformation to the petal. Let rotated petal equals original petal dot applying position. And finally add that to our main path. Path dot add path rotated petal. And finally send the main path back. Return path. I realize that's quite a lot of code, but hopefully it'll become clearer when you try it out. Modify your content view to this. At state private var petal offset equals minus 20.0. At state private var petal width equals 100.0. VStack, flower, petal offset, petal offset, petal width, petal width, dot stroke, 
color.red, line width 1. Text offset, slider, value, dollar petal offset, in, minus 40 through 40, padding, array of, dot horizontal, dot bottom. Text width, slider, value, dollar petal width, in, 0 through 100, dot padding, dot horizontal. Now try that out. You should be able to see exactly how the code works once you start dragging the offset and width sliders around. It's just a series of ellipses placed in a circular formation. That in itself is interesting, but with one small change we can go from interesting to sublime. If you look at the way our ellipses are being drawn, they overlap frequently. Sometimes one ellipse is drawn over another, and sometimes over several others. If we fill our path using a solid color, we get a fairly unimpressive result. Try it like this, dot fill, color dot red. But as an alternative, we can fill the shape using the even odd rule, which decides whether part of a path should be colored depending on the overlaps it contains. It works like this. If a path has no overlaps, it'll be filled. If another path overlaps it, the overlapping part won't be filled. If a third path overlaps the previous two, then it will be filled, and so on. Only the parts that actually overlap are affected by this rule, and it creates some remarkably beautiful results. Even better, SwiftUI makes it trivial to use, because whenever we call fill on a shape, we can pass a fill style struct that asks for the even odd rule to be enabled. Try it out with this. Dot fill, color dot red, style, fill style, EO fill true. Now run the program and play. Honestly, given how little work we've done, the results are quite entrancing.